Introducing Ladies Night in the first ever Toyota Corolla Cross. Girl, I need to get out. So, your three woman crew is all ready to hit the town in your Corolla Cross win. Two more friends decide to crash the party. Hey, girl. Um, can we roll with you guys tonight? No worries, ladies. Sheila's Corolla Cross seats five comfortably. So, not only can everyone go, the crew gets to roll out feeling like royalty. Okay, queens. Y'all ready to do this? All right. Room for the entire squad makes everything feel right in the first ever Corolla Cross. Toyota, let's go places. Rusty Quill presents Chapter and Multiverse. Hello, hello. You're looking rather dashing today, if I may say so. Please sit down. I'll fetch you your usual tipple in just a moment. But I can tell what's really on your mind. Our ongoing superhero saga, am I right? <laughs> of course I am. Well, last time I mentioned that Adib had set off all on his own to seek out his former friend Poltergeist. Rather reckless, wouldn't you say? Hello and welcome back to Chapter and Multiverse, the actual play podcast where we explore the same city across multiple parallel universes. I am your game master, Maddie Searle. My pronouns are she, her. And today we are continuing our campaign of Masks and New Generation, which is designed by Brendan Conway and allows players to take on the role of young superheroes. But before we go any further, I must introduce our wonderful and talented players. Could you please let me know your name and pronouns and your character's name and pronouns, starting with Pip. Hi there, I'm Pip Gladwin, and I will be playing Joseph Teller, aka Zenith, and uh, we're both he, him, and definitely not surveilling you as we speak. Excellent, and Lori. Hello, I'm Lori Ann Davis, and I am playing Blue Day with Morgan, aka Siphon, and uh, just having a lovely time making friends. She, her for both of us. Wonderful, and Lydia. Hi, Lydia Nicholas, they, she, and I will be playing Minnie Smithson, she, her. Fantastic. And Ahmed. Hi, I'm Ahmed Al Jabri, and I am, as always, stoked to be here. Mm. I'm playing Adib bin Yislam, aka the Turban. Adib's pronouns are he and him. Beautiful. Okay, so last we left off, you had met a young woman at the Clear Vision Trading Building and brought her back to the grey box for safety as you discovered that UTBC, the nefarious, you assume, news organization had been spying on you as you had been investigating. Um, Minnie finally revealed to Zenith that uh, she was, in fact, an alien. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shocking. Yeah. Shocking turn up for the books. (laughs) Who could have predicted? Yes. But fortunately, her secret is still safe from literally every other human. Yes. (laughs) And uh, Adib had just set out on his own to try and track down Poltergeist, his former friend turned supervillain. So as we get this episode started, what exactly is Adib doing? Is there any particular place he's going to look? You do know that Poltergeist, aka Lucas Castillo's brother, Felix, lives somewhere in the city and uh, is part of the reason for Poltergeist's behaviour. Adib would, uh, after he leaves the building, he would change his outfit to something entirely different. Pulls out his hoodie, covering his hair and his face as much as possible, just not to be identified by anyone. And he would first attempt to go to uh, Lucas's place, just to watch from outside if he stops by and see his brother. Because he does that sometime, but uh, he would spend a couple of hours staying nearby and just checking out if he goes there. Nice. Okay. Could you please just roll me a d6 and tell me if you get a 1 to 3 or a 4 to 6? Is this a uh, assist or just a roll? Just, uh, just a luck roll just to see what All happens. Right, d6. And I got a 3. Right a smack three. in the middle. Alright, yeah. Unfortunately, as you're sitting watch, 
you can see the the flicker of lights from a television screen on the window as the the city around you gets darker and darker and uh, the occasional kind of shadow as Felix moves from from a chair to the kitchen and back there's nothing nothing else happening the occasional dog barking in the distance and after a couple of hours you conclude that this is not one of the times that um, Poltergeist aka Lucas has chosen to visit his brother so if that happens I will just head out to I would probably know one or two locations where they hang out him and his crew and I will try to go anywhere near and just maybe see him or the other two that usually hang out with him Drake and uh, Hollow yes that's right yeah please give me an assess the situation roll alright and I have minus two to that because I am feeling guilty oh man so I rolled a seven. Cool. All right. On a seven, it takes you most of the first part of the evening. It's getting on for, I don't know, half 11 at night. And you manage to find the right dive bar where Drake is sitting at the bar with a with a whiskey in hand and is um, just looking, looking moody at the bar. Uh, you can you can look in from outside. You can enter, whatever you want. Uh, I would go somewhere like in the side of the. No, I'll just find a table far away where I can see them, and I will order something like a cola. Just sit there, and I would text Vera and say, "Poltergeist, if he's caught, he gets help, not prison." And just dot dot dot. It's not a question, it's not a statement, it's just a very unco- inconfident message. Mm. I think you probably take a while, because um, Vera's asleep. probably like been, as- been asleep, but she probably has an alert, so if, if something comes through, then she'll wake up and have a look at it. And you get a kind of, about 20 minutes later, you get a message back saying, do you have any intelligence that would lead you to this conclusion? I would text back some people need help not to get locked up. She says I would agree, but perhaps this is something to discuss in the morning. Alright, so I, I, I dropped the topic because I don't have anything to convince them or just Did anybody else show up during this time? Um, or did I think Drake probably leave? Yeah, I think Drake probably recognized a couple of people that came in and just kind of said hi, but you don't recognize them as superpowered people. They're probably just fellow ne'er do wells that Drake knows. And so, yeah, it's a relatively quiet night for you. Yeah, I continue drinking as as much caffeinated <laughs> drinks, non alcoholic ones, just to stay up. Cool, yes. And I think eventually Drake just gets up and heads out, uh, probably slightly swaying from the amount of alcohol he's consumed. And the barman calls for last orders and the, everyone starts to shuffle out. I would just try to follow around, just see where he's going. Cool, okay. I would text uh, Zenith. All right. Mm. Uh, you up? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Depends what time it is. At this point, it's probably like 2 a.m. No, I'm not, but I think I have, you know, I've got notifications on all the time, you know. What if uh, Aquila needs me to do something in the middle of the night? Is this on Human Friends or is this a private message? Is it in the group chat? I'm texting him uh, privately. Ooh. Yeah, you just get a message back, sort of, uh, probably about ten seconds later, <laughs> just saying, "Yeah, what's up?" Uh, I drop the location, which is the dive bar, and then I I just look around, spend a few seconds before I start texting again, which is obviously sending a very confused message <laughs> until I elaborate. I found Drake. I'll be right there, and then the others? Question mark. I I don't answer because I don't know what to do. Okay. The drama! <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am jittery now with the, all the caffeine. 
Yep. And with the guilt, because I'm not sure, and I'm worried that there would be too many people, and I don't want to involve too many people as well. Like, this is me. This is my responsibility. But I trust Zenith to be the the one who knows what to do best. Sure. I'm not saying that it's not in character. It's just drama! Sure. <laughs> Out of game. <laughs> Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And also, Lori and, and Lydia, this is probably going to be a thing, right? Like, if I just go and it's just me and Adib, yeah. then it's going to yeah. be like, me and Adib probably get in a fight with this guy. <laughs> That's cool. We can come rescue yeah. you. Don't worry. I mean, Morgan's turning up in the morning with plants. So. We yeah. will be yeah. there with Bluebell, probably, to rescue you. Don't yes. worry about it. I just wanted to check in with everyone else and just because Thank it you. would make sense for me to also just be like, yeah, but, you know, we don't know how tough this guy is, so I'm just going to call everybody. Whatever right you think the character no. would do. Yeah. Do whatever right? you think is, okay. yeah. Okay. I, I, I trust Zenith would know best from the situation, information he knows so far because he probably searched his system for all the information about the people that uh, I mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, also, I think the smart team choice is to get everyone involved, because we have safety and numbers and all that kind of thing. I'm still not the best smart team guy, so I think yeah. it makes sense for me to go, oh, you're going off on, like, a solo mission? I love those. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. <laughs> There's less human factors to consider. Absolutely. <laughs> what decision would Zenith make at, like, whatever this is, two, three in the morning? Yeah. With his betrayal yeah. of Minnie, crushing his mind. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Hey, if that's a betrayal, I've been betraying all of you constantly since we met. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> so, yes, mm. I would like to make a been reading the files roll just real quick because I'd love to know anything about this Drake guy. For sure. Go this for is it. probably something I did earlier in the evening, but I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Hey, that's a nine. Beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah, you would probably know from your research that this is a very confident and charismatic guy that mm. can lose his temper quite easily. And as you heard from Adib, can breathe fire and he can direct it very precisely. You can either like narrow it down to a very precise point or he can fan it out into a massive kind of wave of flame mm -hmm. and you also find that he associates with hollow and with poltergeist you also see that he's been associated with various like bank robberies jewelry store robberies if there's a place where valuable things are kept it's likely that he's taken things from there right cool apart from being able to breathe fire does he have any other superpowers is he otherwise um, otherwise a normal human yeah, I think he appears to be otherwise normal human, but maybe more athletically sure. um, gifted sure. than, but just in the in a way that a human would be, not in a superpowered way. Gotcha. Okie doke. I will quietly, which is something I'm very good at. I think Joseph like has been sleeping for the last couple of hours on the sofa, the really uncomfortable sofa, because uh, he would have mm -hmm. given Bluebell the bedroom in this place. Yeah, I think he's just very, very quietly going to suit up and top in the little lift. And then just because I'm, you know, you, you gave it to me up top, Maddie. So I'm going to use the stealth jet whenever it makes sense to For sure. plug in those coordinates that, that Adib gave me and, and zip on over. Super stealthy. It's nighttime also. So now this thing is basically just invisible. It's extremely hard to see. It's like a slightly darker patch of darkness in the in the, in the sky. And I will I will <laughs> I will drop out of that. swing down and you know I, I don't know probably land next to Adib without Adib realising that I have and then like tap, Holy tap him on the shoulder <laughs> I, I, I knew you'd know exactly where I am when I gave you the live feed but I did not expect this yeah the chat has pretty accurate GPS oh good to know still gps it's not like it's not like lidar or anything it's just like i put in the postcode yeah, got, a little, got a little tom tom in the window <laughs> falls off the dashboard yeah. it automatically selects the fastest google maps i don't know really about convenient. smart stuff fly stealthily to the right i just put it into i just put it into city mapper i just put a deeb into city mapper and it told me where it was yeah yeah um, take the one two two i really bus. like the idea that zenith 
genuinely does interact with it like that and has no concept that like Aquila has upgraded it. So yeah. like, surely everyone's phones do this. Surely, surely everyone's phones tell you where specific people are. <laughs> Find my friends and my enemies and my acquaintances <laughs> and just that guy over there. Find me. <laughs> where does he live? Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, all right. What do you... You want to ask this guy some questions? Oh, for now, I want to see where they're hiding out. Because they change places all the time. Okay. So we're just tailing them. You go low, I'll go high. Okay. I, I continue walking after him, just keeping my distance, as long as he's within eye view of me. Yeah, I will do the same thing, except from the rooftops. Excellent. 100% get one of those shots of, like, a building and then another building and then the moon, and I'll do a little flip past him. <laughs> Yeah. I would like for both of you to either give me an assess the situation roll or an unleash your powers roll, whichever you think is more appropriate. I feel like for Zenith, possibly unleash your powers. Yeah? I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I feel like I'm stretching these moves quite a lot, but I want to I wanna have a bit of chance in there. That is totally fine. Just a six. That's a failure for me. Yeah, and that's a failure for me as well on assess. But I do a, I do a flip and then like... Just smack into the side of, <laughs> down the side of a building. Oh man! Ooh, <laughs> ouch! My knees just break immediately. Oh no! <laughs> Fuck. Oh. oh no, lid. Yeah, a little error message flashes up on your screen. You suck. Flip. You suck. You suck. <laughs> Abort flip. Just immediately has the recommended training schedule that you'll be doing over the next six months yeah. to not make that mistake again. But I will mock potential. Yeah. Yay! For a deep side of things. Also, it's a failure. Yeah, also gets potential. And I think what happens is a very rowdy like hen party, a, a bride-to-be and her gaggle of friends are just being extremely loud and just kind of surround you and like get you all turned around and... Yeah, you completely lose your sense of direction and lose where Drake is going. Ah, excuse me, excuse me. I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pass. I'm trying to pass through. Excuse me. And I'm, I'm trying to keep my distance not to touch anyone who's drunk. Yeah, yeah they're, they're just having a lovely time and it's all fine. And so, yeah, what do you want to do at this point? You've lost, you've lost your quarry. Um, do you want to continue trying to track him down or do you want to call it a night? I'd love to try and just a yeah, I'd love to give give it one more shot, try and relocate him. Otherwise this is this has been a very embarrassing venture once more. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Can I can I assess or am I doing something else? Yeah, you can either assess or unleash. I'm gonna try assessment this time because I am a little better at that. There we go. Oh wow, that is a terrible roll. Uh, the dice do tell a story. <laughs> that's a six, that's another fail. Alright, yeah. I think there's like a particularly powerful, like someone's rigged up a homemade kind of satellite dish and it's really messing with your electronics. It's just completely interfering with all your um, tracking devices. And so, yeah, you're just getting this annoying little whine in your ears that is just completely putting you off your game. Okay, this has been enough times now, so I'm just going to do it myself for fun. I think having now failed a couple of times in a row, the previous mission didn't go great, that didn't go great, I'm going to shift my labels. I think my superior's going down. Like, I'm out in the field now with people and I'm not actually doing as good of a job as I as I kind of thought I would. So I would like to pitch for taking my uh, superior down and putting my mundane up by one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah? Go for it. All right, so that takes my superior down to a plus two and that puts my mundane up to a plus one. Oh, he's literally gone down a peg mm-hmm. <laughs> well while you're going through that you hear <laughs> <laughs> on a roof <laughs> you, uh, you hear a deep on, his, on the comms help me and I'm being, you hear a uh, loud dancing noses queen, dancing and, and I'm being chopped <laughs> to go with them to some dance club. <laughs> yeah, they're just like dragging you um, along to Your this friend. this club. <laughs> I think I'll walk to the edge of the building and kind of 
just look down and kind of watch, watch this, watch this happening, <laughs> watching a deep just being like, no, like, <laughs> pulled away by all these well-meaning but ultimately quite drunk women, and uh, just a just a tiny vindictive part of Joseph's brain is just like, leave him, <laughs> and I will think better of that. And because I'm not a hugely responsible human being, I'm gonna toss a smoke bomb down there, <laughs> just in their path. And again, this isn't an explosive. This is a device that like releases smoke. So there's no, yeah. there's no boom. It's just a like a, a steady release. So that eventually, Adib, you're you know, just in this pall of smoke with all these people who become confused yeah. and hopefully give you the opportunity to get away. <laughs> <laughs> Within this, uh, the the cover of the smoke. Before I attempt to run, I would put on <laughs> everyone some kind of like a face mask from beige cloth. So and just thoughtful. run away because I don't want them to inhale the smokes. <laughs> it's just non-toxic. They'll be fine. I don't know that. You, that's fair. <laughs> Nothing about Joseph's equipment so far has given you an indication. All, every, all the movies that Eve <laughs> yeah. has seen, people start coughing after uh, a smoke bomb. So <laughs> The bride is wearing a little fake veil, a little fake bridal veil, and it just suddenly turns into a mask. <laughs> and then all of the others who are wearing sashes that say, like, hen party, are just suddenly tied around their faces. <laughs> <laughs> They're just very confused. And that both that and the smoke bomb is enough to allow you room to escape. Okay, so I just run away and meet up with Joseph. Yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. Thanks. That's uh, all right. <sighs> I lost him. Sorry. It's... It's all my fault. I, I'm really sorry about this. I should have brought you with me from the start. This, uh, is to do with Poltergeist, right? <sighs> yeah, it's it's Poltergeist. You know them, don't you? I know. I We were childhood friends. We grew up almost together. We knew each other from middle school, and it's... it's... <sighs> I don't want the police to catch him and throw him in prison. I know why he's doing all of this. He needs help. Oh. Okay. I don't know what to do anymore. And Adib just sits down on the ground, absolutely defeated. Uh, human emotion. Uh. I love that everyone is having a moment with Zenith. This is just the most <laughs> unequipped person. Shoulders. It's just all shoulders, just kind of like... Uh, uh. Yeah, up by the ears. <laughs> you still have a condition on you, right? Yeah, guilty. Okay, I'm gonna... Kind of... Zenith just kind of steps over to where you're sort of sitting down and, like, pats you on the shoulder. <laughs> just like... I didn't have um I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Um but uh sounds like sounds like this person's important to you. Yeah. So we can we can help them. They're they're mixed up in this UTBC thing. We get to the bottom of that, maybe we can get them out. I don't know. What if what if you all this time I'm looking for him, he's already doing something else stupidly and hurting other people. How am I helping him now? I'm just failing him all the time. All I'm doing is just lessen damage he's causing, but I'm never able to reach him. It's just... At least you're trying, as you're making your own decisions. I'd like to make the roll to comfort or support... Fantastic. Please do it with your newly plus with one my mundane. Newly plus one oh, yeah. mundane. Yay. Don't fail. Otherwise, that's just going to fit right back again. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, here we go. Come on. Good dice. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I imagine no. that that is the sound that Zenith actually makes. <laughs> But the vocoder is set up so that it doesn't get through. So that it it, it does not translate yeah, yeah, yeah. weakness. Yeah. <laughs> that is a big old four. Oh, oh dear. Oh no. You are not comforted or supported by me in this moment. But I did try. Yeah. Mark potential. We all know that the Senate tried. Yep. That's all I've got. I think I think this just I go I go quiet and then I'm basically just kind of like rhythmically sort of patting you on the back for like five seconds before I sort of stop and just kind of 
stand there awkwardly, not really knowing how to interact with you. I gotta go. I, I, I get up. I, I need to go do something. I, I can't. I can't just keep sitting like this. Uh, yeah. Sure. We're gonna, we're gonna meet up, uh, by the Grey Box in the morning. Yeah. Figure out our next, our next move. And I just tuck my hands in my pockets and just walk away, head hung down. Alright, yeah. After that moment of vulnerability, we're going to take a very short break and be right back. And welcome back. We have just had a deep opening up to Zenith about his relationship with Poltergeist as a former friend. And now I assume you're both heading back to your homes to go to bed and wait until the morning for the meetup at the Grey Box. Am I correct? Yes. Adib is just going to hit the streets. He won't go anywhere specific. He's just going to wander around until morning and goes there up all night. Okay. No worries. Fight some low-level crime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. Um, as uh, as you're wandering around the streets, Adib, you can see the, the gray light of the morning kind of slowly beginning to stream between the skyscrapers. And eventually the sun is high enough in the sky that you think it's probably... A reasonable time to go to the grey box and check in on everyone. So yeah, what time do you think that Morgan would arrive laden with ferns? Well, Morgan would have aimed for nine, but obviously be a bit late. So at about ten past nine, with boxes full of cacti, because our first job was to, you know, cactus man. Uh, she's got three rubber plants, some orchids, so maybe you could brighten up the place as well. And yes, one huge fern. Like I googled how tall ferns grow. Apparently, it's about four foot. This is a four foot fern. Morgan wow. is very good at looking after plants. She's laden with greenery. Amazing, amazing, sweet. And how about Minnie? What's what's Minnie coming into this day thinking about? Minnie is thinking that like that was a really hard hitting piece that she wrote last night about how humans <laughs> don't talk about being human and that's something to really reflect on like do they not realize that their humanity is a big part of how they perceive and react to the world do they assume that their perceptions and understandings are a default and and a base of like correct understanding it's such a strange and like alien way to to think about things um so like she's really think proud this is like the equivalent of a pulitzer prize winning piece that minnie's potentially i i don't think that she would ever be that like she is writing for the spec Markalon equivalent of buzzfeed that's true and not mm -hmm. the hard-hitting journalism element of buzzfeed that used to exist before it was cut yeah but the more like so she's written that as like a really heartfelt intro. And then there's a mm. quiz where you can be like, <laughs> which of these typical humans do you think that you would be? Yeah, it's it's cool. You know, it's cool. But she knows it will probably not be as successful as uh, Cleo's tips on what color hair you should have to match the color eyes this season <laughs> on Earth. <laughs> This season's yeah. eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yes. So uh, you all rock up at the grey box and you can start planning what your next move is if you so desire. Mm. So Morgan's distributed the plants around the place. I hope you are happy with that, Zenith. Uh, yeah, of course. It's, uh, it's like our hideout, right? So put some plants out. Yeah, sure. And, uh, it's Bluebell's home for now. So yes. like, how are you feeling, Bluebell? Uh, I'm okay, thanks. Um, I've had these very generic cornflakes <laughs> for breakfast, and they they were fine. <laughs> <laughs> they were exactly fine. Yeah. <laughs> How obvious is it that Adib has not slept and feels mm. guilty? Mm, yeah. Well, he's not hiding it. Right. Okay. Like he had nothing all night except caffeinated stuff, and he's coming over with coffee or something like that. Um, Adib, are you are you feeling? okay yeah yeah i'm fine yeah okay face value <laughs> excellent <laughs> so what are we investigating well i think our biggest lead right now is u2bc mm -hmm. do 
you want to call me to call up my friend that works there and and ask to spy? You said your friend was an intern. Yep. They do tours. Oh, I'll ask. Mini texts. Micah Trent. Absolutely. You you get a message back pretty quickly. It is uh, Monday morning, so he is probably just kind of sitting, waiting for someone to ask him for some coffee. <laughs> so he's got time on his hands. He replies to you. Hey, what's up? What do you need? Well, well, the tour that I asked about, like, do they do they do tours? Yeah, actually, if you're thinking of going on the work experience program, you can join a tour to see if it's a uh, career path you want to go down. Oh, so it's like really backstage and I in the, the workings of the organization. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much, Micah. Do you think that we could maybe book for this afternoon? I can ask. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Heart, heart, <laughs> heart. Like, smile, smile, smile. Emoji. <laughs> shoo, shoo, shoo. Yes, yeah, shoo, shoo. <laughs> emoji of a shoe and a plant. <laughs> yeah. And a thumbs up. Amazing. Yeah. He goes away and you get a message back about a couple of hours later saying, what names do you want me to put down for the list? I've got it. I've got it in front of me. I can pop your names down right now. Minnie is about to say real names and then turns to everyone and says what pseudonyms do you want for the tour oh i'll have to use my real one because i micah knows my name but that's fine i'll go for um (laughs) fern green (laughs) says morgan (laughs) laughing at her own joke cool (laughs) oh well what she thinks is a joke (laughs) expectant look at the other two Uh, oh um yeah Pick a name. Any name. <laughs> <laughs> Just a normal human you name. You can be <laughs> Lexus. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Lamborghini. Yes. Dynamo. <laughs> yeah, Lexus Dynamo. <laughs> and you can be John Smith is fine. John Smith. <laughs> fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> Both perfectly normal names. <laughs> I see no difference between those two <laughs> names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John yeah. Smith, Lexus Dynamo, it's fine. <laughs> Just the yeah. same. Yeah. 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 Like, totally normal, not human, but like normal names. And Minnie winks at Zenith. Uh, and then <laughs> writes those down. Uh, it's oh, just me, God. Minnie, and Fern Green, and Lexus Dynamo, and John Smith. Yeah, Micah sends back a thumbs up emoji and says, yep, you're all down on the list for 4.30pm. Thank you! Great. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get so much material for articles about this. Oh, and we'll investigate the crimes. Should we look into this poltergeist person then since Hmm. we've... That was going to be my question. It was going to be, do we just smash cut to the tour or... Shall we do other business? I think we, we've got a whole day until 4.30. I think we do some research. Yeah, montage! So does anyone know... Yeah, does anyone know anything more about this poltergeist figure? Mm. I can find out. Files, files. Yeah, boop, boop, Adib boop. is starting to fall asleep on the couch, but he's <laughs> like, he listens, but he's starting to fall asleep on the couch. <laughs> Oh. Too tired to, to engage in this conversation. Actually, this is potentially slight it ish but Morgan probably would have told her uncle about stuff and asked mm. him if he knows anything about poltergeist. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you can even like give him a ring now and see if he knows anything. Or well, I mean, she went home to see him last night, oh, so yeah. could she have asked him last night? Like, did he yeah. have any? Do I need to do a role for that, or is that like? Um. I think that's probably part of your your base, your kind of... My sanctuary. Yeah, your sanctuary. Cool. To have done that, I think you. I have to satisfy something from the GM, so I first have to, like... Are you satisfied, Maddie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm unsatisfied. Oh, no. <laughs> so, like, first I have to have done something, or I need help from, or risk danger, but one of them is I can't just mark a box on my Doom track to have my sanctuary have helped in some way. So I could mark my first doom. Yeah. Eight, yeah. Nine episodes in. Doom, <laughs> yeah, let's doom, do it. Doom, yeah. doom. You've been doom. so careful so far. I know. What happens if you get fully doomed? 
Well, Lydia, that's the question, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> what happens if I get fully We'll beamed? find out. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully we will. The way I'm going, we're never going <laughs> to. <laughs> cool. Yes, yeah, so last night, absolutely, you, um, you mentioned Poltergeist to Owen and he scurried off into the library, looked around at a few bits and pieces, had a look on the computer, went through some files and came back. And yeah, he would have come back to you and said... Actually, this is kind of more on the personal side of things rather than the super-powered side of things. He obviously has telekinetic powers and stuff, and that's Mm. uh, his main method of committing whatever crimes he's been up to. But um, it looks like that his brother, there's records of him having some kind of heart disease. Oh. And, uh, yeah, this is is very illegal. Uh, but you got to do what you got to do in these superpowered situations. But he doesn't have any kind of insurance or anything. He doesn't have any kind of support. So I don't know. Maybe that's oh. the reason that Poltergeist's been doing what he's been doing. Because he's mostly been getting valuable things, presumably to sell. Oh, right. So he kind of needs help, really. Presumably, if OI knows that, he can tell me his real name. Yeah, yeah. The real name is um, Lucas Castillo, and his brother is Felix. Cool. Then in that case, back in the present, Monday morning, add to Morgan's jauntiness about bringing all of the plants. She's also really excited because she's got information (laughs) to share with her friends. (laughs) Cool. Morgan be like, yeah, so, um, yeah, I found out that his, his name, Poltergeist's name is um, Lucas Castillo. And uh, he's got a brother who's, like, really ill. And maybe that's why he's, like, doing all these bad things. Mm. Okay, firstly, what is Adib's reaction to us having this information? And then Minnie is going to predictably express confusion about why being ill would require you to do bad things. Mm. Um, much in the way that anyone that has experienced the NHS is confused by Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Adib does not show any reaction. He, is, he has his eyes closed. He's kind of sleeping or taking a nap at this point. And, but he would not react in any way. He's, he keeps all... Anything about Lucas, he keeps a secret. Mm. Mm. Like the real identity of Lucas. Except to Zenith, the most, like, as we know, emotionally available. Obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so, um, I mean, I don't know how helpful that is in, like, finding him, but uh, it might be worth bearing in mind because, you know, sometimes people just need help rather than, you know, being taken down or killed or anything. But is he hurting people while robbing these places? That's a good question. And, like, I mean, all the businesses, are they are they, like, large businesses or are they, you know, is he scaring people and then they're traumatized and they need help and like it seems like a cascading effect like maybe we should just go to the source and tell him like this is not okay Mm. how about you just kind of fix your country's healthcare system which sounds really simple and then (laughs) like fix it all there's there's a a mental checklist that many has there's this prison industrial complex Mm -hmm. and then and then healthcare system Mm -hmm. right underneath oh we there was homelessness as well yeah oh yeah homelessness as well yeah yeah this is many for president frankly (laughs) yeah (laughs) i don't know if you'd like her solutions (laughs) oh god (laughs) manipulate matter fix it all yeah well yeah i mean um zenith you you're good at stuff like this is there like do you have any ways to find out wh- where where Poltergeist is, or or um, a deep a deep? Are you uh, sorry to, uh, to wake you? But uh, you said you you know where Poltergeist hangs out. I think maybe we should go go look, go 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 try and find him. Yeah, I I went last night. He didn't turn out oh. anywhere, and uh, you went without you us. Went without us on your own wasn't that dangerous? Uh, it's it's my responsibility. If you need help, you just call us okay yeah sure okay i'm gonna do some comforting this is this <laughs> dude is not okay <laughs> <laughs> yes Minnie. sort it out so i mean like a deep i'm you seem to feel bad about something but everything that that i've seen you do you've tried your absolute best and you seem really lovely and fashionable and friendly and kind and I'm sure that whatever has happened is something that we can help you with 
because we care about you and we're teammates. Yeah. I'm gonna roll some dice. Roll it. Assess the genuineness of that sentiment. Ooh. So that's a seven, but then how is it altered? Because it's plus mundane, isn't it? Oh, my mundane is naught. So hey. that's a seven. That is a nice. just about succeed. Excellent. Yeah. So you can absolutely clear your guilty condition, Adib, if you mm. if you would like. Do you open up to me? Because if you do, you can shift your labels. You'd keep the condition though. Oh, it's or yeah. yeah so you yeah. you have a choice: clear the guilt, mark potential, or shift labels. Mm -hmm. Your choice. You can stay guilty. I'm not sure. All of them are tempting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would go mm -hmm. the mark of potential. Mm. Mm. It doesn't really fix the guiltiness. It just no. Mm -hmm. It's he would it just. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, people are getting hurt. Mm. People are losing their uh, their properties. Their it's damaged, and at some point, somebody's gonna get hurt too badly. And this is mm. all my fault. I should have stopped him so many times before. I should have done more. I should it, things shouldn't have led to him joining some bigger organizations. Well, we're here now and we can help. We'll help as much as we can, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, for now, let's just, let's try to find where they're hiding. Okay. So you don't have a lead? Morgan says uh, gently. There was I I found Drake last night. I tried to follow him, but I I lost track of him. Some people oh. got me distracted. Well, next time, call us. I mean, Zenith's really great at tracking people. So I'm sure <laughs> if he'd been there, he would have been able to help. And like... Are you I'm... trying to give him guilt condition? <laughs> <laughs> Conditions are fun. <laughs> <laughs> at the risk of being dramatic, but I am the doomed. So, and this time I started behaving that way. I would like to have a dark vision. <gasps> oh, it's time. Oh. That is one of my doomed conditions that I took at the start, if mm. people remember nine episodes mm. ago, mm -hmm. um, and have not used yet. And we've never done this, so this is going to be a new thing. And I have a proposition, which, Maddie, you can absolutely shoot down as GM. I think when Morgan has a vision... It, it requires a lot of energy and she saps energy from the closest things to her without even without touching them and without intending to. Ooh. So this potentially could be a couple of doom points for her here because she might accidentally hurt people and <gasps> or scare people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is this a situation where, because obviously we're, as players, making decisions for our characters that aren't necessarily decisions our characters are making, right? Mm. So is this... Is this Morgan going, I'm activating my vision power now, it might hurt people, or uh, or Morgan is in this scene, maybe because we're all like, what's going on? Are we trying to find this person? Where could they be? And then that triggers it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've been... That, that's the only shaky thing I have, is I'm not really sure what triggers it exactly here, yeah. but maybe just that we need something is what triggers it, because yeah. she's not doing it on purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're all floundering for what to do, and Adib seems like really down yeah. about stuff. And it, do you yeah. know what? It might be that she was so happy this morning, <laughs> and now everyone seems to be so sad and despairing, and we're all floundering. And I think she just starts to feel a bit weird. Obviously, you don't see this. She's from Morgan's point of view. She starts to feel a bit shaky. And then you just see her her eyes roll to the back of her head. She drops to her knees and her head snaps back. Uh -oh. And she has a vision. And what I would like, so I, when I have a vision, I can ask the GM a question. Mm -hmm. Where will we find Poltergeist? Yep, 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 mm. yep. Excellent. And I have to mark a doom. So that's two dooms now. Can I nice. also, like, while we may deal with this afterwards, after we've got the answer, I think that if that happens to Morgan, a couple of us would, well, definitely Minnie, probably, mm. possibly Bluebell, you know, would immediately, like, step forward to try and yeah. catch her. Absolutely. Which, of course, yeah. means that that brings us close mm -hmm. uh, for energy suck. Yeah. Um, so how you want to play that, whether we, like, 
unknowingly because I don't want to force your doom on you <laughs> by being like, <laughs> we go and help and that hurts you. No, I think you should absolutely behave as you would instinctually mm. in character. Yeah. And yeah, I think, I mean, Maddie, what I'm putting on you here is how far does it go? Mm. I think you touching me means I do absorb your energy <gasps> And you will probably pass out. What I might suggest is that you do an unleash your powers roll. And mm. if you succeed, then you suck energy from people you unintentionally. successfully drain us. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Could I counter, I think she will be drawing energy from you no matter what. Yeah. But oh, yeah. This is just how bad it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Cool. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you get? A, did you get? Is it a hit? Yeah. Okay. I, I rolled a nine. Okay. Yo. So that's a that's a big old success. Right. So yeah. as you suck power from Minnie, mm. we can resolve your the question. But as you're like falling into your vision, you have this very strange vision of a uh, like you feel like you're falling through this flying city of like bright strange lights floating shapes and mm. people with incredibly passive emotionally intelligent like annoyingly emotionally intelligent faces <laughs> coming around saying Minnie are you alright? Oh my god and this strange like and they're flying it's all very odd but that passes in a second and then you're within your vision Amazing. Does it look like? I mean, I know again whether we can react quickly enough. I don't know, but does mm -hmm. it look like um, Bluebell is going to get hit with this as well, and are even myself getting hit with it? Well, do you think that you step forward quick enough? Are you close enough, or are you on the other side of the room? I'm pitching for a, if if Bluebell is like in the splash zone, as it were, and I am not. I am pitching for a defend roll to sort of get a clear and take it myself mm -hmm. but I also don't maybe know enough about Morgan's powers to like know what's going on also yeah. so that's I am imagining Bluebell being kind of quite far back she's not as part of the group as you are she's not as integrated in the group mm. as you are so she's like listening and she's trying to like she's trying not to hinder you in any way but she's also yeah she's just kind of keeping back a bit mm -hmm. So yeah, I think you you would all be the closest people to Morgan at this moment. Right. And also Adib is presumably like on the couch. So I don't know whether you are gathered around the couch or whether you're standing a bit further away. Mm -hmm. Cool. So is anyone going to be directly touching Morgan as she goes into the vision? I think it's just, is if it's just Minnie, the other people can step forward, but if yeah, Minnie is uh, closest, which seems quite likely in terms of like mm. how they'd be walking around, Adib sleeping, like... Joseph is always a bit further back, both yeah. emotionally and physically. <sighs> like, <laughs> I think I'll, I think my move will be as I see Minnie touch Morgan, and then like I assume pass out. Yeah. I will catch them. I'll grab Minnie before they like you know fall on the floor. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. Um, so yeah, as you fall into this vision after seeing this strange apparition of a, of a planet so far from like many light years away you are suddenly sucked into this black void and instantly you are surrounded by like peeling wallpaper the smell of mold you can see that this is some kind of apartment that is very run down there are a couple of mattresses laid out on the floor and you can see a young man who matches the description that Bluebell gave he is in his supervillain outfit with the with the neon green skull on it. He's on his phone and as your vision kind of swerves around him, you can see over his shoulder and you can see that he is he is looking at a floor plan of uh, the Chapter Central Hospital. And um, you can see him kind of planning out routes and he does one of those he does he, like it's this is very in congress but he does one of those google maps things where he's like arrive by x time at the hospital <laughs> and you can see that he's like set it for 10 30 p.m tonight yeah yes <laughs> okay and as you as your vision kind of zooms out you get a very brief flash of the front door of this apartment building and it's it's one of those tenements where it has a single door number and the door number is 12 you don't get a good view of 
like what the street name is or anything, but you know it's number 12, it's a tenement building, it's a rundown area. So that's the information that you glean from that cool. vision. And you do, yeah, you mark you mark Doom, and then you can also mark another one as, as Minnie thunk, falls down to the oh floor no. but is just caught by Zenith as he notices that she's collapsing backwards. And on that note, I believe we're going to end the episode there. <gasps> Uh-oh. So... Oh no! I so. love to end an episode unconscious. Right, it's very restful. <laughs> I love it. It's very restful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just have a nice snooze in between episodes. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening once again to Chapter in Multiverse. And I would like to ask our fabulous players where we can find them on the internet. Starting with Ahmed. Hi. You can find me everywhere at Mister Al Jabri, mostly on Twitter, where I share Arab tidbits to use for tabletop RPG characters and world building. Just find the avatar with the turban. Wonderful. And Lori. Hey, you can find me on Twitter at Lori Tweets and on various other Rusty Quill projects. Beautiful. And Pip. Hi, you can find me at Pip underscore Gladwin on Twitter and all over the podcast universe. Find me. <laughs> you know, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I'm really sorry, mum. <laughs> I am Lydia Nicholas. You can find me on Twitter at Lyd Nicholas or Urban Chooks. Or podcast wise, I'm on this and the Town Whispers and other rusty cool things. Wonderful. All right. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie underscore abstract, where there are links to all the various things that I do. And we hope to see you next time on Chapter and Multiverse. But until then, from all of us here in the space between worlds, goodbye. Chapter and Multiverse is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It is directed by Maddie Searle and produced by Natasha Johnston with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner. The Eternal Tavern Keeper was played by Kareem Cronfley. This episode was edited by Lorianne Davis, Katie Seaton and Maddie Searle with music by Nico Vitezzi. Thank you for listening.